Are you recording already? I am. I hit it by accident, so I just figured I'd let it roll. <laughs> okay, that's fine. It's like doubling down on your... Uh... That's right. <laughs> I've got a two and a seven. All in. Barring you. Barring you. That guess my goat be true. Hi, everybody. Welcome to That Gets My Goat. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. And uh, we've got another episode for you, guys. There it's you an go. embarrassment of riches. That's right. It's because we've got new Zooms. So these things are working. Oh, yeah, good point. Let That's me double true. check, actually, real quick. Make sure it's really recording. Uh, oh, yes, it is. Okay. You know that we did three different Force Awakens episodes, guys? That's how much we love you and hate the old Zoom. Okay. So um, I got an email. Uh, very recently from David Caffrey. It wasn't recently. It was relatively recent. Continue, continue. <laughs> Despite what your conscience is saying. Just... Uh, at least I assume it's Caffrey. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Sorry if I, Sorry if I totally butchered it. But anyways, he uh, suggested a couple topics to us. He said, you know, I, on That Gets My Goat, you always talk about, uh, you know, TV shows, movies, that kind of stuff. So here are a couple of shows that I would really love to... Uh, Hear your opinion on show number one, The Expanse, which is a show on the Siffy channel. And uh, yeah, you know, when he said that, I was like, oh, let me, let me tell you, I would love to talk about that show. Unfortunately, I don't have Siffy. Um, it doesn't it doesn't play with Hulu, I guess. I don't know who uh, where you can if there's a way you could if anybody knows of a way. See, this is what I've got. I've got no cable. I have Netflix. I have Hulu. I have Amazon. I can watch anything that's on those three services. So if it's not on that, then I'm effed. Uh, we'll mention this later, but that's, I, I would love to watch the Supergirl show. It's not on Hulu. Apparently NBC is having their own little, CBS. oh, sorry. CBS is having their own little separate uh, streaming thing, and I, I don't know if it's actually launched yet or not, but it, it has. Yeah, that's how Jeff okay. watches NCIS. Apparently. Okay, so maybe I need to look into that and see if there's a way I can find that. But I don't know how you can get Siffy shows. I'm guessing that probably sometime over the summer, maybe uh, the Expanse will show up there, and I'll be able to watch the rest of it. So far, what I've seen is episode one, which they basically put everywhere they put it in any place that you could imagine so you could watch it uh and get hooked and then want to watch the rest on sci-fi siffy sorry thank you I mispronounced that yeah that's how the new star trek series is going to work too is the first the first little bit is going to be free baby that's right and then you're going to the, come back the first hit of crack anyways so i've seen the first one uh, and on top of that before they even went into production on this I read all the books in the series and oh I loved them and when I found out they were making a TV show of it I was super excited I was just completely stoked and it, and I found like a little trailer for it on YouTube and I posted on Facebook and I said everybody needs to watch this show because I want to see it I want it to be successful so it keeps going through all the books because it was really good and the first episode that i saw which i saw on youtube they had it posted on youtube but i think they had it on uh, everywhere else too um it was good it was well done it looked really nice is it still on youtube the first episode probably is do you think you could put a link to well never mind i could could i put a link to it i guess I just or won't remember, but I, I will try. Mench, just when, when you come across this as you're editing, go on to the thing and write, put in link. Yeah. And I will uh, I will do that if it does still exist, <laughs> if it's still available. I don't know if it's still available, but I don't see why it wouldn't be. I mean, it's the first hour of like a 10-hour show, so why would they not just say, here, try the crack. You should try it. It's good. This first hit is free. Maybe someday we'll talk... Uh, more in uh, depth about The Expanse if it becomes available and we can see it. But for now, we're going to have to leave it at that. All I can say is 
if you if it's available to you go, uh, watch it really it's it's uh, the books were awesome i loved them it was such an interesting uh concept it's a, it's a space opera series but it's a it's a near future space opera instead of a really far uh future it's not like star wars where people are just jumping into wormholes and hitting hyperspace and they got to program the nav computer cuz the you know that line. Say that line. Go. Well, how precise calculations we might pass too close to supernova. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Anyways, that, that it's not like that. Real quick, kid. It's not like that. It's set. It's all in our solar system. You know, but people have settled Mars. They've settled the asteroid belt. They have uh, bases and small settlements on the outer planets of, you know, Saturn and Jupiter and the moons there and stuff like that. And such an interesting uh, idea and take on that kind of stuff. That I just love it. Um, and so you should really check it out if you can. Uh, this is my hearty recommendation. The books are written by James S.A. Corey. Not a real person. Yes, that's actually an amalgamation of two people. Where's a, is there a... There's going to be some kind of pop culture reference where two people somehow are sharing the same body. <laughs> all of me? Yes, basically. It's Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin in All of Me. Yeah, so that's what it is. Basically, it's uh, Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank writing as a collaboration, but instead of putting well, Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank, they instead decided to brand themselves as J James S.A. Corey, which I suppose is an interesting way to do it. That way you don't have to worry about anybody being like, oh, why does my name have to be second? Gosh, that sucks. Um, nobody ever feels like the second fiddle or anything. I guess, but we could talk about this and I think we probably have talked about pseudonyms before on the show, but what if what what happens if Daniel Abraham wants to write his own book? People won't know that he's half of James Corey. You know what I mean? Yeah, that is that is a kind of a weird thing. It, it doesn't automatically lead people to your other stuff, which seems like shooting yourself in the foot, especially in these days when there's so many billions of books on Amazon that if they can't just search your name and find you. Uh, could be, you know. But let's say Daniel Abraham mode. writes a book on his own. Can he publish it as James Corey? Or is it only when it's the two of them together that it's actually technically James Corey? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I assume it's only when the two of them are together. But I really don't know. I don't know how they've worked it out or any of that kind of stuff. But Oh, you know. But anyways, you just keep that's, that's my recommendation for that. So we're going to move on now. The second show. Oh, you didn't ask if I'd seen it. Uh, Rish has not seen it because it's on Siffy. And he has vowed to never watch anything on Siffy. Only sci-fi channel shows uh, there you go. are valid for him to watch. Once so. again, Paul, you have crystallized my thoughts eloquently. So, yeah. Anyways, back to the rhythm at hand, yo, yo. <laughs> um, the other show that he suggested we talk about was Jessica Jones. Now, at the time that he suggested this, I was probably on episode six. I have since finished that show. So now I feel finally able to talk about it. You and I finished the show within about a week of one another. Because, yeah, I was a good six months behind. We watched an episode like every other week. And so by the time we finished Jessica Jones season one, Daredevil season two was available to watch. Yeah. And to me, that that was great. It was, uh, that was a really good way to watch it. I know there are people that just binge. They watch all the episodes in a weekend and then there's like, oh, I can't wait another six months for Luke Cage to start. <laughs> but if you parcel it out like I did... And we will parcel out Daredevil in much the same way. Those shows will just always be, there will always be more. Yeah, I wonder about that whole thing. Because I know they have, they have, they did Daredevil first. Then we had Jessica Jones. After Daredevil finished, they're like, oh yeah, we're going to do season two of Daredevil. So Dare, that went straight in to production. And now that's out a year, basically, uh, later than the first season came out. 
but there's still also a Luke Cage series and a, uh, I can see him in my mind, but I'm not coming up with his name, damn it. And there's an Iron Fist series that's supposed to come. They've also, now I've learned, greenlit season two of Jessica Jones, so they're gonna have to fit that in. And once they get all four of those out, they're supposed to come together and be the Defenders, which I, uh, I heard is supposed to start filming like later this year or something. Oh, is that right? Um, I know that uh, they just announced the casting of Iron Fist, and Luke Cage is already yeah, almost was... done. The the whole season is yeah, is that's is supposed just... to come out in September, I believe. But uh, they're just about to start shooting Iron Fist. But I hadn't heard they were going to do Defenders that soon. Yeah, they... if it were me, I think I would just continue to postpone a little bit longer. Yeah, and so that Defenders is an event when it finally happens. Yeah, they they doing more seasons. Like when I originally heard it, the whole plan, it seemed like oh yeah, each one of these gets one season. They're not given second seasons to anything. It's the thing. The second season is the Defenders when they all come <laughs> together. Yeah, and you know, like Daredevil could appear in you know, some of the other series later and, you know, each one of them can start appearing in in the later series as, so that could be the season two, but yeah, fitting in a season two of Daredevil and a season two of Jessica Jones and will they do a season two of Luke Cage and a season two, you know, at, I think if they're successful, they will. They, you, how also crazy missed, is this going to get? <laughs> you've missed that they're, they're going to do a spinoff of The Punisher. Yeah, that's, that's a new thing that's just come out since season two of Daredevil hit. Now, Punisher, who is a part of the Daredevil show is spinning off into his own show. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It seems like it could get unwieldy. <laughs> but, you know, I, I guess I couldn't complain. Like, if you had a, a season of each one of these shows that dropped, like, every two months, that'd be rad. You'd have to watch them more frequently than we do now. But it would be really cool to have that much material to, to just enjoy because they're all really good. Like, I just finished... The Jessica Jones series just the other day, and it was really good. I was really impressed, and there was a certain point uh, when I was getting towards the end that I just kept going and kept going. You know, the show would end, and I'm just okay. I'm playing the next one, and it was a Saturday night, and I stayed up until like 2 a.m. watching Jessica Jones one after the other. I think I watched four or five that one night. <laughs> I finally at 2 a.m. I had one. I had the only the final episode left, and I was just like. Ah, it's 2 a.m. I, uh, I gotta go to bed. And so I saved the last episode for the next day cool. to, to finally watch the, the big finale. Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, Daredevil, the, the series of Daredevil, and I don't know that we ever talked. Did we do a post Daredevil? I don't know that we did. We, we had both seen like the first couple episodes and we talked about yeah, that. We did like a, just starting out Daredevil episode, but I don't know that we ever did a post Daredevil episode unless we mentioned it in a Agents of Shield episode or something mm -hmm. like that. But Daredevil was really good. It was a really good show. And to tell you the truth, I think I like Jessica Jones even more. It was really good. And I think I liked maybe I liked the character. Maybe just the storyline was more interesting to me. I'm not sure what it was about it. Maybe it was that noir kind of feel that they gave it or maybe it was just the awful outfit that she wore constantly with like the slightly loose jeans and that same tank top although she had like a gray one sometimes and a white one other times and then the jacket she wore the same thing through the entire show which doesn't really bother me <laughs> it totally worked for her character because her character just didn't give a shit about anything I don't know what it was about the show that I just loved, but it seemed really intense, just really awesome. And they kept, you know, there was a point, and you told me about this point because you were a couple episodes ahead of me, where you're watching it and you're just like, okay, the next episode's the final episode. Cool. This really got good, and I got, it's just about to hit the final episode, and I'm excited. Let's go to the, what the hell? There's There's three more episodes? How can there be three more episodes? It's got to be wrapping up right now. But it didn't. It had three more episodes. And the thing was, those were good episodes. 
I was in the same, you know, I was watching them one after the other that Saturday night, and I went, okay, there's the next one. Wait, what? I thought I had, there was 13, I thought I had to be on 12. I'm only on, oh. But yeah, even though you were sure it had to be wrapping up, it still kept me entertained the entire way through. And uh, maybe I think the difference between this show and Daredevil is Daredevil is a lot of just karate fighting. People, you know, punching each other for long periods of time sometimes. Whereas Jessica Jones was not that. She had superpowers and she could, you know, take people down relatively easy if she felt like she needed to. But it was much more of a plot-driven story than a fight scene driven story. I mean like there was a there was a one episode of Daredevil. I don't want to say it was like episode 3 or 4 where he goes after this missing child and he goes into this hallway that leads into several different rooms of bad guys and you have this just and the scene is friggin incredible. Like you watch that and you're just like, "Oh my gosh, this is just it's one take and it's, you know, just amazing the whole way through. You're just watching that and thinking, wow, this is great filmmaking right here that I'm, I'm witnessing. It's really uh, something special. And I mean, that's kind of Daredevil in a nutshell, whereas Jessica Jones had nothing like that. There was no big fight scene whatsoever. There was... I mean, the, the sex scenes were more violent <laughs> than any fight scene that they had. Her and Luke Cage pounding away at each other <laughs> was tougher than any of the fight scenes that they had in Jessica Jones. Uh, what, what was your opinion of Jessica? I've seen you nod and stuff here, so it seems like you kind of agree with me, but I don't know... Uh, I've been talking for a long time. You have. It's funny. I, the roles have reversed. I've had very little to say in this episode. I did not enjoy Jessica Jones as much as you did, obviously. There was the point when I think it was at the end of the 10th episode or the 9th episode where I felt like, okay, last episode is coming up next. And then I saw that there were four more. And I was like, but what? Why? Guys, no. And... For me, it was really difficult to make it through those last four episodes because I started to feel a little bit of pacing problems. And, and, and you know, there were all of these characters that weren't Jessica Jones and weren't Kilgrave and weren't Luke Cage and weren't Trish Walker, who were like their four major characters, right? Uh, or you could have Simpson be the fifth. But like her crazy upstairs neighbors or the... The guy that was down the hall the from druggie. her. And once it got into, you know, these characters talking to each other without Jessica in the room, I was like, oh, guys, come on. No, don't do this. I don't <laughs> care if she's all right or not. Guys, stop it. This is a horrible, horrible character. Please, guys. And the lawyer, the lawyer that Carrie Ann Moss played and her problems with her ex and her relations with her secretary and all that, every single time yeah. they were on the screen, I thought, why is this... Guys, stop it! Why is this on here? They were awful in the early episodes, though, when they had... They were, there was no... You couldn't see any purpose to them. That's why I was like, saying, oh, why are they are, on here? When, they, when you got to those last four episodes, they actually had something to do, finally. Which they finally paid off the, okay, I know you've been hating these people this whole time, but okay, watch this. Yeah, see, that was worth it, right? I'm okay, maybe well, it wasn't worth it, but it was cool. Well, see, yeah, I think <laughs> that the series would have been better with 10 episodes than with 13. But having said that, the second to last episode, and this flies in the face of what you just said, so don't take it personally. The second to last episode, Kilgrave puts his power on to Luke Cage and we get a fight between Luke Cage and Jessica. And it was so worth it. That was riveting because Jessica was trying not to hurt Luke. Right. And Luke had no control over himself and he was trying to kill Jessica. 
And it was just all out, you know, superhuman strength and all that. But she was trying to restrain and, and trying to take him out without hurting him. And I was really emotionally invested in that fight. Plus, it was a long fight scene with stuff and stunts and special effects that we hadn't seen through the whole rest of the series. Yeah, it was. I, I loved I, that second to last. That episode. was pro- that was the biggest fight. <laughs> possibly the only one that can really count as a fight <laughs> there may have been a few others where there's like a few punches here and there or the security team or whatever that was with Kilgrave jumping in on him or whatever but yeah that and that's cool when that kind of stuff happens because that's it's like the the avengers where the avengers starts out and none of them are on the same side and iron man and captain america and thor all kind of fight each other and then they also throw in Hulk fighting Thor uh, in the in the film. All that you know, you get to see. Oh yeah, what well, you know, you you once told me that your nephew back when he was uh, like six years younger than he is now would always ask you, okay, what if uh, Wolverine had to fight Daredevil? Who who would who would win that fight? You know, and it was just the thing that he would always constantly ask you. Change it up. Okay, what if Red Hulk? had to fight She-Hulk. Which one would win? That's one of those things that comic book fans love to obsess over is, you know, who's the toughest of these characters. They all have these various superheroes who would win in a fight. You know, P- Professor Xavier is stuck in a wheelchair, but, you know, he could win a fight against most anybody because they can't fight him because he can just take over their mind or, you know, whatever. They discuss, oh, yeah, but Magneto has his helmet. <laughs> Anyways, it's, you, you can't do a superhero thing and satisfy everybody completely if you don't at least find some way to pit them against each other for one good fight like they did in uh, that episode. And, yeah, I feel like maybe we can't we started wrong because you talked a tiny bit, not not very much, on The Expanse about what The Expanse was about. And I still have no effing idea what The <laughs> Expanse is about. But we didn't really talk about what Jessica Jones is about. And I wonder if this was supposed to serve as an introduction to the show and recommend that people see it. And we're supposed to explain who Jessica Jones is and what the premise of the show is. Or if this is just for people who have already watched it they just want to hear what we think. This would feels be like for it's... people who have already watched it, I would say. If you haven't watched it, spoiler alert, uh-huh. uh, we're going to talk about episode 12. Yeah, we just oh, did. Oh, we just did. Uh, but <laughs> earlier, before we were podcasting, and again, I feel like there are certain things that I'm not allowed to say because of my skin color and my gender. And that's a new experience just in the last couple of years. But please just bear with me. Uh, when I say these things and just pretend that I have a voice and I'm a human being and that you like me. And so you you want to hear what I have to say. But Jessica Jones, the character, was kind of unique for me in that she was a female character who was so ridiculously flawed that there were times when I was just like, oh my gosh, oh, dude, she was self-destructive. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. She She wasn't just you know, Little Miss Perfect, and then maybe there's one little thing they throw in there, I don't know, for drama's sake. <laughs> she was a wreck from beginning to end. I mean, just, yeah, you mentioned not, her not giving a crap what she looks like or whatever. That is remarkable in American television, that somebody does, that, that an actress doesn't look perfect 100% of the time. There were a lot of really amazing things about the character of Jessica Jones because, yeah, there were a lot of times when I was just, I didn't like her. And we were still watching the show. Um, and, and, and as the show progresses, you get more glimpses into her past and, and her motivations for being what she is now. And, and a lot of it, you learn to like her because you understand her a little more. But when she was first introduced, I remember just going, oh, jeez. Oh, no, not a... What? Can she possibly drink another bottle? Yeah, it's just... It was... <laughs> it, it, again, flies in the face of, of how we have been told female characters are supposed to be portrayed in entertainment. And I don't know why that is, but you can have a man character, like, let's say, a Gregory House on House, 
who has tons of problems. You know, he's a drug addict. He's a curmudgeon. He's arrogant, and he and and he's got a you know a nasty, uh, mean spiritedness to him. You know, I mean, he Greg House's flaws almost outweighed his one positive trait, which was he's a brilliant doctor. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Um, but if it's a female character, we don't do that because we don't want to alienate, or we don't want to. I, I I don't know. There there are reasons. I don't know what they are. For why women characters can't be so well-rounded or can't be so hampered with baggage. But Jessica certainly was. More so than any character on Daredevil, well, save Wilson Fisk. Um, but as the show progresses, you get into her head. And, and maybe that was intentional. You want her not to drink or you want her not to push somebody away. You want her not to do the thing that she always does because you know where it leads. You want her to take the road less traveled so that she can find happiness. And she's obviously a miserable character from the very first time we see her. And you want that to change. And I thought that that was really, really interesting about the show. Um, and, uh, you know, the, 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 the Daredevil characters, you know, Foggy Nelson and Karen Page... And of course, Matt Murdock, they're just likable people. And sometimes they have their flaws and sometimes they, you know, they make mistakes and all that stuff. But, but they're inherently decent people or good people and you root for them and they're attractive and, and all that. Um, but yeah, Jessica was just not that way. And uh, I thought that that was pretty dang cool, except for the show was, there were times when I was not enjoying watching the show. Uh -huh. Because it was grim, it was dark, and and, <laughs> and 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 it was more adult than any of the other Marvel Cinematic Universe things that we've seen. I feel like maybe Winter Soldier was the most adult of all the movies, but Jessica Jones was way more adult than Winter Soldier. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. You don't, you know, you don't need to show that to a kid. A kid wouldn't get that much out of it. Right. A kid would probably be bored with Jessica Jones. They wouldn't make it through. Uh, very far because yeah i mean unlike daredevil there wasn't at least fight scenes or you know guy doing uh parkour up the wall or something <laughs> like that to get a bad guy um but that's neat and we've talked about that with guardians of the galaxy and winter soldier and avengers and ant-man and all that you know that you can have one that's comedic and one that's serious and one that's science fiction and one that's you know old-fashioned and and all that stuff, all being in the same universe, there are a million different ways to tell stories. And you can do a show that's basically a noir, a film noir with a female protagonist, which you don't see a lot of, or I don't see a lot of. I'm, they're probably out there. But a lot of times those are alienating to me. Um, but the other thing I wanted to talk about, and in the same way it makes the show less fun, was the villain who's Kilgrave, and in the comics, his name's the Purple Man. And my introduction to the Purple Man was, oh, this is the guy that messed up Jessica. <laughs> and uh, he he's a Daredevil villain from the 1960s, and then, you know, went on to be an Avengers villain and all that stuff. But he really came into his own in the 21st century with the Alias series, which is what this show was based on. And uh, he was played by David Tennant in the in the series, and a lot of people were upset by that. And they were. They loved David Tennant because he was their favorite doctor. And he is my favorite doctor. And having seen Jessica Jones, I like him even more. Oh, gosh, he was so interesting and charming. And there were, there were facets to his personality, too. There were a couple of times when I felt sorry for him or there were times when I, I sort of rooted for him. There was this time when this newspaper guy is saying, Hey! Hey, you! And, and he's just screaming at him. And, you know, in the way that New Yorkers do. And Kilgrave says, take your coffee, throw it in your face. And the guy does it, hot coffee, and he goes, ah! And I was just like, yes! That is the greatest thing. Oh, gosh. I want somebody to dump hot coffee on the entire city of New York. And it was in, in the same way that watching an anti-hero or somebody, you know, that 
you know, a Stallone character or whatever that doesn't take no crap from anybody. You know, the, the man with no name that Clint Eastwood plays where, you know, you just want him to ride into town and just beat the crap out of people or shoot a bunch of people or whatever. I, I got catharsis in watching him be so immoral and so... He was a repugnant character, but he was played with such charm that I couldn't help but like David Tennant even yeah, more he was as an played a. by David Tennant, so, you know, that's what you get. I really, really enjoyed that, and uh, I, I didn't know where they were going to go with that, because in some ways, Jessica was harder to like than Kilgrave. Now, yeah, we saw Kilgrave do some really reprehensible things, and okay, so it's harder to... But he was charming, and Jessica tended not to have any charm. No, she she wasn't the charming character of the show. I don't know if there was a term. I guess David Tennant was the most charming character of the show, despite the fact that he's the bad guy and he's the, you know, the, the one that does the worst things. You know, Jessica's just that. I don't know if she counts as a, a reluctant hero, maybe is the, the right word for her. She doesn't want to be a hero. People have tried to get her to be a hero already, and they, you know... Trish tried to come up with names for her, like Jewel, and she's like, what the hell, that's a stripper name. <laughs> um, you know, all, all this, the the things that she's gone through, and that she does not want to have to bother with that, to live up to somebody's expectations. She's just like, screw that, you know, I'm not that. And everybody keeps trying to make her, in, reluctantly, you know, because of, some inner principles that she has and just the circumstances that she gets into in life she feels obligated to to fix things and that's fun i mean that's a that's a relatively common thing the reluctant hero but she took it kind of to an, another level i mean she's not just like luke skywalker who's just like oh i need to stay here and run the farm with my uncle oh well my uncle's been burned to death so i guess now i don't have to do that so why don't we go try this it's more of a, she continues to, to, to try and avoid it. And even to the point where she'll get mad at people when they try and say that she's, don't you call me a hero. I'm not that. Um, which is cool. It's, it's interesting. By the way, in case you're wondering what that weird noise is, I don't know if you can hear this or not, but it is raining. So maybe uh, if you can hear the weird tapping maybe even static sounding sound it's just the rain hitting the car roof sorry but yeah that was jessica jones uh again i would recommend it this like we said this is the most adult in the marvel world probably because even though daredevil was atrociously violent <laughs> <laughs> it, was. It, it, it at least stuck with that. It didn't get into even more adult topics like in Jessica Jones, you know, the whole subject of mind control and therefore rape comes up and is dealt with somewhat, which, you know, adds another. Uh, on top of, here, take this and stab yourself once for every year that I was left alone by you, you know, and you get just blood and gore like the guy who took the freaking shears from the gardener and then just stuck him in his mouth and fell on the ground and jabbed him through his head just the, the, there was an awful lot of really gross stuff there was blood and gore abounding because of the fact that Kilgrave could just make people either kill each other or take their own lives really at his whim so there was that plus more uh, so, yeah, it's not a show for kids. Marshall Latham, please do not watch it with your children. <laughs> and hopefully you've also learned the lesson to not listen to that gets my goat with your children. <laughs> I, I, I do want to say one more thing, though. Okay. And, and I feel a little bit bad because it's been a glowing review. And then I kind of have to put this let's take off a star point here at the end. But although I've, I already have. Because there were all these supporting characters that I felt yeah. were on there way more than they needed to be, just so that we could have 13 episodes instead of 10. Yeah, the lawyer but, and her wife and her lover. Yeah, every second they were those. on the screen, I was unhappy. Yeah. But the show ends on such a high note, you know, just 
the last three or four episodes, they do go right into each other. And it almost feels like the pace suddenly speeds up. Like it's been in third gear. And then we shifted into fifth or fourth or whatever the fast gear is. <laughs> and you can go and you're like, whoa, I didn't know this baby could go like this. They'd been sort of holding back. And then the show just rockets to the end. And when the end comes, I was satisfied. I was, wow, good. Thank you, guys. This was time well spent. And then they announced there was going to be a second season. And I don't need to see a second season of Jessica Jones. I, I feel like, wow, I'm satisfied. I'm, I enjoyed the run, but I don't, I don't need to ride that ride again. I, I wonder if there are other people that are like that. Maybe not. Does that take a star off of the thing, though? The fact that they announced it's coming back? Oh, yeah, certainly. <laughs> it's, well, that we, can't detract we away from the series about, itself. We've talked about movies where shitty sequels come out, and it sullies okay. the original. But just the fact that they're doing one can't sully the original yet. I mean, at least it's got to come out and suck. There are movies you have seen... Where you're like, I know they made a sequel to that. I'm never going to see it because that movie is done. <laughs> that movie ends. But the ending remember, just... I think it might have been you telling me you never saw the second two Matrix movies. No, I didn't. Because not. the Matrix ended with the end. And you're like, no, anything that comes after the end is just a coda or whatever. The, the audience is already walking out of the theater while you're playing yeah. this thing. It's like, uh, and that's how it's I like feel. the genie on the credits of uh, Aladdin pulling up the screen and then just saying, made you look, and putting it back down. But the, the end of Jessica Jones sh gives you kind of an idea of, well, I don't know. It, it's, it's got a great ending where she's got all these messages on her phone that are like, oh, Jessica, you're a hero and I need help. Please, my husband is beating me, or oh, my my daughter is lost. I need, you know, all these all these people calling her and begging her to be. I know you're a hero, <laughs> and her just going ah, you know, despite all of her uh, trying to avoid being a hero. Now she's known throughout the whole city as the the hero of Hell's Kitchen as opposed to the devil of Hell's Kitchen. So, I don't know. I thought that was interesting, and I think it could be fun to see see where they go from that. I don't know how what season two might be. And yeah, I can agree with you. It, it ends, and it should be the end. It's got a great ending, and it's had, a, had a, a great 13 episodes, and it could sully the original. could wind up sucking. It could be like Heroes season two. Where you're just like, oh, is that where the Maja is coming in now? Oh. Hero season two was better than Hero season three. Well, yeah, but by season three, we like watched one episode and then we're like, oh, okay, after this, we're done. I bet we watched six episodes in you season think so? three. I think we did. Uh, it could be possible. One other thing that I wanted to just mention, one last thing about Jessica Jones. In episode 12, or is it 13, we get a visit from a character from Daredevil. The night nurse, who is played by, uh, what's-her-face? Mr. Encyclopedia, spit it out. Rosario Dawson. By Rosario Dawson, who I wouldn't remember the name of yesterday, but today I forgot. Rosario Dawson, who is the night nurse, she's the one that helps uh, nurse Daredevil back to health several times throughout the run of that series. With her hands and her body. <laughs> suddenly shows up in uh, Jessica Jones and helps her nurse Nick, or sorry, Nick Cage, <laughs> helps her nurse Luke Cage back to health. That was cool, I thought. I, I like to see the cross-pollinization. I really liked that when she showed up. Now, here's my complaint about that. Why the hell did we never hear one other whimper or peep about... The Kingpin and Daredevil and all the stuff that went on with that. This should have been, I don't know, on the news or maybe Jessica should have said something. Like, I'm not a hero. I'm not the devil of Hell's Kitchen or something. Don't even try to put that on me. Just something. A tiny little mention of, yeah, this other hero also is existing within feet of <laughs> where we are. 
I don't know, I wish that they had at least a throwaway line would have been all it would have taken to satisfy me there. And yeah, I noticed that from the beginning too, that it was really divorced from all the rest of... Wow, that's hail. Is that hail now? Well, that's snow, right? Oh, that's ice at least. Unless that's just munge on my... No, because look, here, <laughs> there's another one, there's another one. It's just landed. It felt really divorced from A, the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole, but two, especially the Daredevil series, which, you know, is sort of made concurrent with it. It's in the same city. Set in the same portion, not even the same just New York City, where, okay, I can understand, yeah, there's, it's a big city of 20 million people or whatever, and yeah, I guess maybe people won't know about Daredevil if they don't live in Hell's Kitchen. And it's set in Hell's Kitchen! <laughs> That had to have been intentional. I mean, it's, it, it, it's almost easier to acknowledge the other stuff because it's expected. We've seen it in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We've seen it on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And so there was the episode that was like fifth episode or sixth episode where they obliquely refer to the Avengers. And I was like, oh, okay, well, this it does. Thank you, guys. I needed that. I wanted that in every single episode. I ate it up on Daredevil like the three or four times they mentioned, you know, I don't, it's not like I have a magic hammer or whatever, you know what I mean? I was right. like, oh, yay. But yeah, they, I don't know. They felt, I felt like they just were saying, no, this is going to be enjoyable on its own. This is not going to depend at all on any of the other shows. And then Rosario Dawson comes on the last <laughs> Yeah, episode. well, I like to see her there, but I was kind of sad that we didn't get at least something more. Uh, okay, and, so... But, sorry, let me uh, tangent for just a second. I'm using it as a verb. <laughs> I've been... Go I've gone back and I started watching Arrow. And in the second season of Arrow, they start talking about... Anytime somebody's on the news, they turn on the news, they're talking about this reactor that's going to be built in Central City. And it's really controversial. And there are people that don't want it to go online. And see, Arrow takes place in this place called Starling City. But there's another city like six, seven hours away called Central City. And they're going to build this, what's it called? Particle Accelerator. A Particle Accelerator. And the first time they mentioned that, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And then they mentioned it again. And then they mentioned it again. And then Barry Allen comes on the show. And you're like, oh, that's so cool. That's the right. And then Barry Allen finds out who Green Arrow is. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then Barry Allen gets struck by lightning. And he's in a coma. And then Felicity Smoke goes off to Central City to, to, to visit Barry in his coma. Through episode after episode of the Arrow. And I was like, holy crap. This is the greatest thing. Oh gosh. I wish I had been watching it when it was new. Knowing that this was all building up to a show that would star Barry the, as the Flash. The, all these pieces had been built leading up to Oh, it was it was so rewarding. And you easily could do that on these Marvel Hell's Kitchen shows where you put just a little thing down here and we don't touch it. We're just going to leave it right there. But another show is going to pick this up. And when they do, you will remember. And that stuff is really, really cool. Anybody that goes and watches Daredevil after they watch Jessica Jones, when the Night Nurse character comes, they'll be like, oh, hey, whoa, ah. I, I didn't realize okay, that's what she meant when she said she'd done this before. Yeah, when she said she's not her first. Oh. Yeah, I, it would have been cool if they'd done more with it. And they, when it comes down to it, all these cinematic universe shows and movies, uh, if a movie can't just be called a show, really ought to do it more. Because they, they started out and said, hey, everybody, look, these all take place in the same universe. But somehow they don't really. Things that should be mentioned, like we talked about it in Captain America. When Captain America Civil War, I think... Not Civil War, that hasn't come oh, out. Oh, sorry. When Captain America Winter Soldier came out and they're like, Oh crap, we gotta go to this big final battle where we go and fight these helicarriers and Washington and DC is gonna be destroyed, guys. And we, we're gonna have to do it all by ourselves. They don't even say, Oh yeah, well I talked to Iron Man and he said he couldn't come because he's fighting the Mandarin right now. And they don't say, oh, yeah, Thor, uh, yeah, he's he's busy with the Frost Giants or something. I don't know. You know, they, they don't even give him an excuse. They just don't mention him at all. The only <laughs> mention of him at all is that Tony Stark is one of the people targeted by the Helicarrier. You see him on the screen appear for a second. Oh, I'd forgotten that. I need to see that movie again. But, 
And that was a failing because we just saw the Avengers last year, man. You, we know that they're all there. You gotta at least deal with it because why would they not call them if there was this kind of a thing going on? The same deal goes with all of these things. You know, there needs to be just more cross pollination. Pollination or pollination? Pollination. Pollination? Really? Yeah, well. I think it's pollinization. Okay. I'm going to say pollinization because I don't think pollination is a word. All right. But it is pollination. It's a word. Uh, it, it's what you call the country that all the pollen comes from. Okay. Is the pollination. <laughs> oh, that's but, terrible. Okay. So anyway. There, there, there were countless times in Jessica Jones when they could have mentioned M- Matt Murdock's uh, law firm. Law firm. They could have mentioned what Wilson Fisk was doing. They could have mentioned, you know, the the opium trafficking and all that crap, or, or the yeah. We had uh, our drug addict, uh, drug addicted guy who could have said, "Oh yeah, the whatever I got this from my dealer who was this guy," or and I don't you know. You know, or there there was a vigilante out there, and is he good or is he bad? Wilson Fisk is is build. He wants to rebuild Hell's Kitchen because of what happened in the Battle of. The Battle of New York is, I think, what they called what happened in Avengers. Yeah. And I don't know why they didn't do it. They should have done it because every single time they did it, I would have smiled. I would have been, I was like, oh, it's a small world. It's really yeah. cute. And, you know, nasty old Carrie Ann Moss could have said, you know, you don't need a high-priced lawyer like me. You, you need somebody like Foggy Nelson down there on, you know, wherever street. They, they take charity cases. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I remember back when I read more comic books, you know, I, I'd heard the uh, process that led up to the death of Captain America. And they just talked about, uh, apparently all the Marvel comics writers and illustrators and so forth, they go like to a retreat every year. And they go out to like, I don't know, a cabin in the woods And they sacrifice five people to the elder gods to keep us able to continue on with our lives. And also, they have meetings where they basically plan everything out. They say, okay, this is what we're doing. And, you know, Spider-Man's going to be doing this. And Captain America's doing this. And Thor is doing this. And Iron Man is doing this. And we're going to have this big crossover that's about this. And, you know, they work all this stuff out ahead of time. I know that now there's been like a big division between the whole, you know, the movie side of Marvel Studios and the TV side of Marvel Studios. And so maybe they just don't play along well. Because I get like Kevin Feige was, you know, he was ousted from the television side. Uh, he just doesn't get to participate or whatever. But what they should do is the same kind of thing. They should all meet and they should say, okay, here's what's going on. This is what this is about. This is what that's going to be about. This is what that's going to be about. How can we work a little bit of this into that and that into this? You know, they need to have a cross-pollinization meeting. And, you know, they could do it once a year and, you know, re... Because one thing that they always say, it's it's really hard to have the movies reference the tv shows because the tv shows move along so much faster you know what they're doing by the time the movie comes out they hadn't even thought of or considered when we started making the movie because the movie takes you know years to put together whereas the tv show you know they're making a new one every week and they're really just pounding them out but you know if you if you plan it ahead well the perfect example was the first season of agents of shield how it felt like it was building toward Captain America Winter Soldier. And once it's revealed what's going on, you're like, whoa, they had that plan from the beginning. It it becomes obvious they they knew where they were going. And you enjoy Winter Soldier more having seen Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and you enjoy Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. more having seen Winter Soldier. Yeah, that's totally the case. And that that season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. kicked ass. But... Remember that the one thing that also did happen is it felt for a while like they were treading water on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. until they were finally able to get to that point. And that's true, yeah. 
And there were several episodes where you're like, oh. And the, the viewership of the show dropped off a lot. It started out really high and then rather quickly dropped away. And then I think a lot of that may have come from the fact that a lot of people thought, oh, it's Avengers the TV show. And they got on and they're like, wait, there's no, no Captain America, no Thor, no Hulk, no nobody. F this. And they stopped watching. And, and that's too bad. Because I think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a fantastic show. It I, is. I am surprised every week. Because there are like five or six shows that I watch. I watch way more TV than I used to. <laughs> uh, and that's all about to change. But there are four or five shows that I watch every week. And Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is always better than all of those shows. You know, sometimes you'll get a really good Flash episode. Or sometimes you'll get a really, really good what else I watch episode but agents of shield is consistently really really good yeah i think they're really missing the opportunity too with for example the avengers movie happened avengers 2 and they had that little lame tie-in where supposedly shield saved that helicarrier for them to come and save everybody from the Sokovia floating rock thing uh, at the end. And we didn't even get like a shot of, I don't know, Ming-Na Wen or Daisy Johnson. What's her actress's name? Chloe Bennett. Chloe Bennett. Any of the people from the show, they you should have seen them at least manning this helicarrier. There should have been something like that going on. And it totally, I mean, this, this is a good, gajillion dollar movie that's going to be seen like by whatever is larger than gajillion people. It's, it's super commercial. You could totally just say, watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, just flash that on the screen for a while by just putting these people in there. And all those people that watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. the first week or two and then said, oh, I guess I don't need to watch that. They can be like, oh, yeah. I forgot about that show. I should go back and watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's built-in commercial that they just don't even bother with. They could totally up the ratings for all of their shows just by giving these guys a cameo. Like I'm, I doubt that we're going to see Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist. We're not going to see any of those in this upcoming Civil War movie that's about to come out. They are heroes. They should somehow be involved in Civil War because it's basically something that deals with all heroes. We won't hear anything probably about the Inhumans that are happening on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We won't see... Uh, what's her name? Quake? Is that what her uh, superhero name is? Daisy, Daisy Johnson. Johnson. We won't see Quake or her little team of Inhumans that helps her. We won't see uh, Lincoln... Or the guy that can turn metal to goo. <laughs> who I think is just Siler Reborn. We won't see those. You know, it's a, it, it could be an easy commercial for all of those things, but we're not going to see them and it's not going to happen. We get commercials for the other movies. We get Spider-Man in there. We get uh, the, the various Avengers. We're going to have Ant-Man in there. We're going to have Falcon in there, which I guess isn't a commercial for other movies because Falcon was always a Captain America guy. <laughs> but... But you get like Iron Vision Man. and Scarlet Witch. Yeah, and Visions, all these people Black that Widow. that come from other properties. Black we're Panther, see them. did you mention him already? Oh, right, yeah. We Black get Black Panther. Panther introduced, and it's like, and meanwhile, he's going to have his own movie, guys. Yeah, they commercial for other movies, but they're not commercialing for their TV shows. It's just, I don't know, a missed opportunity. Okay, so that's that. We're, we're finished with his question. With, yeah, with Jessica Jones and thoughts about Jessica Jones and we are moving on to other TV shows basically that came with this series that gets my goat will be continued next time Good. run while you still can that gets my goat is produced under a creative commons 3.0 license doesn't have to be but it is stay bark bark quagtail Good boy. Good boy. Uh, really big? Seriously?